You ever been watching a camera review by this guy? Or this guy? Or even that dude? And you're sitting there like, what the f does that even mean? Well, allow me to explain. So what exactly is 10-bit 422 and why does it even matter? Well, 10-bit and 422 are just different ways that describe how your camera actually captures color. The 10-bit is your color depth or your bit depth. And that'll basically tell you how many color possibilities you have for any given pixel. The 422 refers to something called chroma subsampling. And that'll actually tell us how often we take a color sample from the image. Because most of the time you're not actually recording color data from every single pixel. So let's break it down starting with bit depth. 10-bit basically means 2 to the power of 10. And you multiply that out, that comes out to 1024. Now your camera has three different channels. It has a red, green, and a blue channel. So in 10-bit, you have 1024 shades of red, 1024 shades of green, and 1024 shades of blue. And then you multiply them together, you get over a billion color combinations. So that's your bit depth or your color depth. Now let's take a look at the 422 and what that means. This is your chroma subsampling. In this process, those RGB channels, they're converted over to Y, CB, and CR channels. Now Y ends up being all the brightness or the luminance data, but the CB and CR channels are where the chrominance data is, or the color data. And that's really what the 422 applies to. Now let's break it down and see what 422 actually means. The first number is your J number. This is usually a four and it tells you how many pixels wide we're looking at in a two pixel high grid. The second number, in this case is a two, tells us how many color samples we're taking from the top row. The third number, in this case is another two, tells us how many color samples we're taking from the bottom row. Then all the empty pixels just copy whatever color data is in the pixels next to them. Once you have all your color data, you combine that with your Y or your luminance data, and then you get your image. The idea here is that if you combine all of the luminous data with just a little bit of color data, it's actually enough to make an image look pretty great to the human eye. Now the reason this works so well is because the human eye actually distinguishes brightness way better than it distinguishes color. I know a bunch of friends that are colorblind, but I don't know anyone that's luminance blind. Now let's compare 10-bit 422 with what most people are used to with consumer grade cameras, which is 8-bit 420. So let's break it down using what we learned earlier. 8-bit, as we know now, is 2 to the power of 8, which is 256. So that means you have 256 shades of red, 256 shades of green, and 256 shades of blue, and they combine for about 16.7 million color combinations. Now let's look at the 420. You're looking at a four pixel wide grid. You're recording two samples of color on the top row, but you're not recording anything from the bottom row. The other thing with 8-bit 420 is it's generally a compressed file type, which means it goes through a whole bunch of other different phases that throw away even more color data. Now before you start thinking that you have to go buy a 10-bit 422 camera because it's somehow gonna make you a better filmmaker, I need you to understand one thing. If you took 8-bit 420 footage and put it right next to 10-bit 422 footage, straight out of the camera, I can tell you that 99% of your clients are not gonna be able to tell the difference. The only time that it's gonna start to make a difference is if you're really doing a lot of color grading or green screening or if you shoot in a log profile. Here at the studio, me and my partner Dave, we're full-time filmmakers and we almost never have a reason to shoot 422 because the jobs we're doing just don't require it. It's not necessary. So I just wanted to be clear that yeah, 10-bit 422 does give you a lot more information, but it's really only gonna matter if you plan to use that information. Otherwise, if you're like us, you probably just wanna save some drive space because we don't wanna be storing hundreds and hundreds of gigs of footage for every single project if we don't need to. And that is my breakdown of bit depth and chroma subsampling. So now when you're watching one of these camera reviews and you hear that it does 12-bit 444, you should know what they're talking about. So thanks for watching guys. If you have questions or you want me to explain other technical specs, definitely hit me up in the comment section below. And if you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see more just like it, I hope you subscribe. But other than that, my name is Kavika with 9th App Studio and I will see you guys in the next video. Shoots!